to verbs with one object and verbs with different objects. And then here they're practicing the dialogue with it. And Harper, Jin, and Nadal today are police officers. Okay, Nadal and Harper, Jin, you can begin. Harper, Jin, uh, do you work? Yes, I am a police officer. What do you do? I arrest the thieves. For Canada's newest arrivals, there are many issues to resolve. Language, schooling, housing, employment. There can be culture shock and the residue of traumatic experience, whatever it was that forced them to leave behind familiar circumstances and flee to Canada. And take the thieves to court. For the people who are trying to give the newcomers a hand, there is also much to learn, especially in the area of cultural sensitivity. Everything you do with regard to new immigrant groups should be culturally sensitive. And so that's another sort of educational plan for you in your community. Uh, you should go out and, and ask to be invited into the new groups and un understand their faiths, understand their needs, uh, understand their conflicts, and then understand what they need uh, and not be afraid to ask, well, what is it you need? And you'd be quite surprised that what they need and what you think they need are two very different things. One of the problems that I deal with daily is this overlapping notion that immigrants are refugees and refugees are immigrants uh, and that there are no differences. There are vast differences and uh, people should start understanding them by that way. One is by choice and one is not by choice. Uh, one has uh, certainly uh, a, a period of dislocation and uh, alienation. The other one has that plus dealing with the past persecution. I'm so happy to see how I've changed. Can you imagine when I came here, I was completely down, crying every day because of my children. I couldn't believe that I would have them. Till the day uh, the immigration phoned me and told me the children were at the airport and I said to the lady, please, don't say that, don't joke. And I started to cry. What I can say is just that God worked in my life in miraculous ways. I want to bring this up because I think it does have um, a bearing on what I perceive to be the central theme of, of this group, which is that how do we work towards a position on refugee issues that is a position of responsibility? It's an absolute pleasure to be in a group where people use words like responsibility and complicity and they talk about ethics and values because I think we need to talk about that instead of words like, even words like compassion uh, and, and care, because those are words that encourage us to think that we are better than we really are and that we're not implicated at all in what is happening. Uh, whereas responsibility encourages us to ask, how did we contribute to the situation we're now trying to solve? And it encourages us to see refugees as people like us. It involves being self-critical, I think, of who's the newcomer and who's doing the welcoming. Um, there's a certain amount of privilege associated with being the welcomer, being white, um, having access to an education, um, and so on. And I think that when you encounter a newcomer, those kinds of issues can be raised, but they can only be raised if you're open to a kind of dialogue with that other person. Yes, I came to regarding housing problem here. Yeah, uh, housing I, problem. I want to get an apartment right. with a two bedroom. Or two bedroom. How many family are in? Uh, most of them will do with less, you know, than what they had probably in their own countries, but they're happy with that and their hope is there that they will, you know, have a new life, uh, a better life, and particularly for children, that the parents, you know, they know that they all, they may never um, be the doctor or the lawyer that they were in their own country, but they see hope for their children. Boys and girls, we have a new student this morning. 
who will be joining us for the rest of the year. This is Elaine. Would you say good morning to Elaine, please? Good morning, Elaine. Hi, Elaine is from Burundi, and so we're going to put him with Elvis, between Elvis and Lynn this morning, so that he has someone who can help him with his English. So Elvis, if the you biggest problem that the refugees or immigrants are facing or face in Canada is who I am to whom I go, to where I belong. I, I am going to become a Canadian one day, or I am going to be something in the middle all my life. Or maybe my kids are going to become a Canadian. And I call that refugee syndrome. All refugees, anybody who comes to a new home has a problem. There are the social adaptation as an individual, there's the learning the language skills, there's integrating economically, there's learning social skills, there's integrating politically. These are all different dimensions of the problem, all extremely difficult. What would I, as a Canadian, do if I was in that same situation? Go to a strange land, don't know the language, haven't got a job, where do I go? What do I do? I mean, you just, you, you can't even imagine you know, you say, okay, well, hey, I know English, and English is spoken everywhere. Not really. Not really. I mean, if there was only a few countries in the world that you could go to, and they had no idea of the, the you know, commonness of, of the English language as it is today, and you went in there, and you had to learn, uh, it would be tough. It would be really, really tough. So how can I help you today? Um... Like, I'm having a problem, and my husband is abusing me, mm -hmm. and, um, like, I, d I don't know what to do. Like, One of the, the scenes that we found is that a lot of families in their own country, they were living in an abusive relationship. These abusive relations, they, they're still uh, growing up and getting worse, no? Majority of the women, immigrant women who come from different parts of the world, you know, it's a major shock for them when they come here, you know. They were used to living, you know, either in a joint family, there were extended family members nearby, they are all kind of support system. And many of the men, you know, they got very, very frustrated, very, very, you know, angry and time hostile, you know. Because many of them came here, you know, hoping, you know, to get rich, you know. They had heard, you know, that how quick it is you know, to get a job, how easy it is to to own your own house, you know, how easy it is to have your own car. The husband get under, you know, the influence of liquor, you know, become even much more, you know, abusive, you know. The couples, they break down, they split, and it's really hard, it's really sad, it's very sad, because what happened is that when the, they split, the woman feel more alone. We help them in the second stage when they are looking for a new life, a new way, and settling them. That's why we have the support group, because in a way that they don't feel alone and they can meet together and, and share their own experience. One of the, the, the initiatives was to, to try to organize better this group in a way that they can start their own business. And, uh, and we have a, a, a friend, Hector, who facilitated the meeting. What we're gonna talk about today is how to start thinking in business terms. When they come here, they find out that they have a, a light. What I believe is a, is a light that they can leave this, this hell that they, they are living in, in, this, in, in their own family, you know, and start a new life. 